Hello there guys, welcome back to Blues Fans TV for another preview of mine for Champions League round of 16 second leg preview of mine and as you can see in a much in a very very different surrounding in my new flat in my new flat obviously the background will still be adapted slightly I know you can't really see what's in the background right now it's just match day programs really because the lighting is a bit weird and it might be a little bit echoey as well if it is I really do apologize all these things will be fixed you know, over time, I'm still kind of in the process of moving in, kind of like building wardrobes and shit like that. So, you know, it just takes time. Um, but of course, you know, it's the day before the, you know, second round, uh, second leg of the round of 16 in the Champions League between Chelsea and Bayern Munich. So, of course, I'm going to have to record whether everything's done or not. So this is where we are today. Chelsea are to take on Bayern Munich tomorrow evening on Saturday evening at the Allianz Arena in Munich, of course. And we lost the first leg 3-0, which of course is not great and will make this game very, very difficult. But before talking about the game itself, please make sure you subscribe to Blues Fans TV if you haven't already. But we're still on the long road to 200,000 subscribers, so every single one of you counts. So make sure you subscribe if you haven't already. And if you have, make sure you tell your mates about it and tell them to subscribe. And of course, drop a like on this video if you do enjoy our content and if you're excited for the game tomorrow. And um, okay, a lot of you might not be ex excited for the game tomorrow, so just drop a like anyway. Drop a like if you're happy for me to have my own flat at the moment. So that's bloody brilliant. Drop a like, that'd be bloody great. But let's talk about the game. Like I said, we lost the first game, the first leg, 3-0 at Stamford Bridge. And, you know, after that, to say it's going to be a tough game is quite the understatement. And to even contemplate Chelsea standing just a tiny chance of turning this around, which, by the way, would be very much so up there with Barcelona turning it around against PSG after losing 4-0 in the first leg, is even more ridiculous. And even it would be even ridiculous if we didn't have about 57 injuries. Do you know what I mean? Like, I mean, obviously, Pedro, Azpilicueta and Pulisic are out for this game after picking up injuries in the FA Cup final last Saturday. Of course, they're all out. Pedro even had to have surgery, so get well soon to him. Then you have the situation with N'Golo Kante, who was deemed fit before the final, but then remained an unused sub, um, you know, in the game, in the final, with Lampard explaining that by saying it would still have been a risk to use him. I am actually recording this before, you know, the boss holds his press conference later on tonight, simply because for European away games, um, the press conferences actually take place quite late in the evening. So we don't currently know whether Kante is now fit enough to start or at least come off the bench or whether he still, you know, isn't able to do that really. And it's a similar situation for Ruben Loftus-Cheek and William. William, by the way, strongly looking like a move to Arsenal being imminent at the moment. But both of them two that I just mentioned have had problems with their Achilles. Um, tendons. Loftus-Cheek was pictured in training today or yesterday and looking quite sharp as well. Quick feet and then a finish um, that, you know, a little video that Chelsea posted. Um, so it looks all right. And then William did at least, you know, say himself that he tried everything to be fit in time. But like for Kante, without the press conference at this moment in time, I just don't know for sure. And alongside all of that, both Marcus Alonso and Jorginho are suspended after being sent off, um, you know, later, later on in the game in the, in the first leg. So, you know, that's bloody brilliant as well. But with all of that being said, Let's talk about what team I personally think we should field, as well as the team that I'm predicting Frank Lampard to go with. Now, for me personally, we have absolutely nothing to lose. Of course, you could say it's important that we don't get embarrassed, which definitely is a possibility with all of our injury problems that we are facing and with how good Bayern Munich are. But really, we don't have anything to lose. So if you ask me, we should go all out and at least try to make the impossible happen. We should at least try. I mean, I very, very much doubt we'll be able to pull it off, but I'd rather go out fighting than hiding and defending like a bunch of cowards. You know, that's my personal um, opinion towards the game. Hence why I personally would feel the 4-3-3 with two attacking number eights, whether Angola Kante is fit to start or not. I would just go for it. Go, go all out. What's the point in hiding? What's the point in hiding? Fabrizio Romano, um, the very, you know, reliable journalist, said that Kepa will not be Chelsea's goalkeeper next season, meaning no point starting him anymore. So it is Caballero in goal. And back four, obviously, like I said, 4-3-3, um, of Andreas Christensen and Kurt Zuma, as they do center backs, in my opinion, really just cannot, cannot possibly start after that horror show in the cup final. Um, just, it's an absolute no for me. Then coming to the fullbacks, we literally only have two first team options, really. So it's Reese James at right back and Emerson at left back. You know, Alonso suspended, has been quite injured. I mean, yeah, you could argue Ian Martin, maybe he deserves a go at left back, as he has been training with the first team recently. And Emerson does look like he will probably leave this summer. But if you ask me, that's almost too much, nothing to lose to start Ian Martin. I mean, at least we should try to turn it around, in my opinion. But, you know, maybe I'm wrong and he would actually do better than Emerson. I'm not 100% sure, but I think it would be a little bit too much of a risk. In midfield, I would have Kante at the base, of course, in my 4-3-3 with two attacking number eights. And if he isn't fit, you know, if Kante isn't fit to start, then go with Mateo Kovacic there. And then as the two attacking eights, I would personally have Ruben Loftus-Cheek and Mason Mount. 
Um, obviously, in front of them, Kante or Kovacic. If Ruben cannot start, well, then obviously just pick Ross Barkley, I guess, next to Mason Mount. What, what, what else are you going to do? Coming to the front three, though, you have Hudson Odoi on the left. Pulisic is out, so you have Hudson Odoi on the left. And then William on the right, I guess. Although I do see the argument that William, with his move to Arsenal, only seeming like days away, maybe he shouldn't play. Fair enough. But if he is fit and if we want to set, give ourselves the, the best of all the tiny chances we do have, he has to start, if you ask me. You, you just have to start him, really. And then, in my opinion, you should also go for Olivier Giroud up front. Now, of course, if William is not fit, then we're kind of starting to struggle a little bit. Because, in my opinion, uh, as far as I'm aware, Tino Underim isn't fit either. Armando Broja um, is a striker, not a winger, really. So that's not an option. So I guess if William is not fit, in that case, you would just have to go with Mason Mount on a wing. What else are you going to do? And then Barkley, instead of him next to Ruben Loftus cheek as one of the two attacking eights, but then if neither Ruben nor William are fit, well, then it will have to be Matteo Kovacic with Barkley as the two eights with Mount on the wing. But then what do we do with Kante isn't fit because then you need Kovacic at the base. Well, then I guess we simply cannot play a 4-3-3. So I'm kind of banking on people being fit. But again, I don't know ahead of the press conference. Um, but I guess we could still stick to a 4-3-3 if we chuck another youngster in there and start Lewis Bate. Could do. Not seen enough of him play to really judge it. But, you know, he's been training with the first team as well. So, you know... It, it's kind of tricky. So that's the team on this side of the screen, of course, that I would personally pick. But again, you know, I don't actually think that that is what Lampard will pick because on this side of the screen, you will now in a second see the formation I'm, or the team I'm predicting Frank Lampard to pick because I actually think he will stick to the 3-4-3 formation that we have been using for a few games in a row now. Um, but also to some extent because he might be forced into it because of all the doubtful players that we have. And like I said, you know, unless he's happy to start Lewis Bates, Ian Martin and etc., you know, he might kind of be forced to not play a three-man midfield because we don't really have three available midfielders, in all honesty. So, you know, with that said, like I said, 3-4-3, Caballero still in goal, a back three of Zuma at right centre-back, Christensen as the centre centre-back, and Antonio Rüdiger as the left centre-back. Still don't think tomorrow will come into the side, even though you probably should have Antonio Rüdiger after that shock in the FA Cup final. The two wing-backs will then kind of obviously be Reese James and Emerson. Again, Ian Martin possibly, but I doubt it. A midfield two of uh, Matteo Kovacic and N'Golo Kante. If Kante, again, can't start, then I guess you put Barkley next to Kovacic. What else can you do? Because you need Mason Mount as part of the front three, with um, him probably starting on the left and Hudson on the right. Maybe Hudson on the left, Mount on the right. I don't know. It doesn't really make that much of a difference. You know, they probably interchange, would probably interchange quite a lot anyway. And then I'm strongly expecting Frank Lampard to still pick Olivier Giroud up front as well. As for, pro as for our <laughs> approach to the game, like I said, let's go all out. Play a high line, press them like crazy. And see where it takes us. Let's just see where it takes us. I mean, if they hit us on a break and go 2-0 up, we can still change the approach and defend to make sure we don't get battered. Although against Bayern, that isn't guaranteed, even if we talk, park two buses, that, that we don't get battered. But, you know, I guess we can at least try. But I just want us to go for it. What's the point in not trying? The energy that the lads saved on Saturday after, you know, for, of, you know because they went for a stroll instead of playing an FA Cup final after the 10th minute, Use that energy tomorrow night. Use that energy against Bayern Munich and just try. Run your socks off. Press. Shoot from distance at times. Go for the one-on-ones, uh, one-we-ones um, against defenders, against, you know, midfielders, I guess, as well. But don't try to outrun Alfonso Davies. It's not going to work. You know, just don't try. And um, don't bloody fall asleep defensively all the bloody time. Just don't fall asleep. Whether it's set pieces or, you know, just defending, just don't fall asleep. And um, especially looking at you there, Antonio Rüdiger, especially looking at you, don't fall asleep. Because, honestly, he's pissed me off a lot in the FA Cup final. But yeah, that's really it about Chelsea. And let's talk about Bayern Munich as well, quickly. Well, they're a ridiculously good team. They won every single game since the restart in Germany, winning them the Bundesliga and the German Cup. In all competitions, they have now won their last 17 games in a row. They also scored 100 goals in the 34 Bundesliga games after having a really poor start to the season, meaning especially the second half of the season was ridiculous. Honestly, ridiculous. There are a couple of things that go in our favour. We're talking about Bayern Munich, a couple of things. First and foremost, the fact that they haven't played a competitive game since July 4th and are definitely not in the rhythm anywhere near as much as we are. But that also means that they're rested. And that also means that they have way less injuries. So, you know, it is a positive and a negative, but, you know, we will see only on the night whether it is a positive or Who's a, who it is a positive for, I guess. Another small positive, I guess, are the injuries to Pavard, the right back, and Kingsley Coman, the winger. But with their squad, quite frankly, in all honesty, they should easily be able to compensate for that and won't make it much easier for us um, at all, really. They strongly tend to line up in a 4-2-3-1 formation, but because they're pretty much always the better team in any game they play, 
they use a very, very attacking variation of the 4-2-3-1 with the number 10 pushing up next to Lewandowski to kind of make it an almost two-striker formation. One of the DMs, then pushing up to fill that gap of the number 10. Um, the wingers going rather narrow to allow space for the fullbacks to bomb forward. And then the centre-backs also play a very, very high and aggressive line. And of course, you have Manuel Neuer behind them playing almost a sweeper rather than just a, a basic goalkeeper. Um, one thing that I guess is up in the air is whether their manager, Hansi Flick, would actually field their best team or rest a few players because, I mean, they do go into the game 3-0 up and most likely have a Champions League tournament. They want to win coming up. At the same time, though, they have had over a month off and, if anything, they probably need game time, not a rest. So, you know, you would kind of have to expect Bayern Munich to field their best team as well, regardless of, you know, the score in the first leg, really. At the end of the day, I am, let's say, 99.9% .9 sure that we will not manage to turn this around. I mean, it's Bayern Munich, it's away. We're already 3-0 down and we have about 3,000 injuries. So, you know, the likelihood of us actually turning this around is near on zero, in my opinion. Um, but I also don't think we'll be embarrassed. I also don't think we'll get embarrassed. My prediction is us going out with our heads held fairly high after a rather entertaining 2 draw. That's my score prediction, a 2 draw. I hope we win, I don't know, 4-0, 4-1, be great. Or I don't know, we win 3-0 and then win on penalties, be bloody brilliant. But the, the, just the thought of extra time with the amount of injuries we have does not fill me with hope. So, you know, if anything, we probably have to do win 4-0 or 4-1 or something in 90 minutes for us, you know, to get through to the, I guess, the Champions League tournament to you know find a winner of the competition um which starts next week of course i'm pretty much I'm pretty sure in lisbon but yeah to be honest guys that has been it for me i hope you enjoyed this preview this first preview in my new flat like i said i hope the the audio isn't too echoey you can't really change it right now it will of course be adapted and fixed um over the coming weeks and over the coming videos videos of course um but yeah if you haven't already make sure you subscribe to blues fans tv if you haven't already drop a like if you enjoyed this video drop a like if um, well, I don't know what reasons. Just drop a like. Just make me happy. Cheer me up because, you know, the Chelsea game probably won't tomorrow, let's be honest, because we probably will be out of the Champions League. And um, let's just hope we don't get more injuries. That, that'd be quite good as well. And of course, leave me all of your thoughts ahead of the game down in the comments section below as well, whether that's your predicted lineups or your score predictions. Leave me all of it down in the comments section below. But yeah, thank you guys for watching. Up to Chelsea. I'm still excited for the game tomorrow, even though I am kind of scared. But yeah, thank you guys for watching. Up to Chelsea. And I'll see you when I see you.